Well, hopefully it worked for you folks. Hopefully you were able to get something like an orange. If it was too red, just use less of the dark color coming up. I will tell you that this one is, I believe, the, the most challenging one to make. Um, this one should be pretty easy over here. So let's do the red and the blue. Red and blue are pretty um, equal in which is going to be the darker color, so it really doesn't matter which you put in first. We will probably start with the red. So to continue our story about Surat, remember to continue to very lightly apply these dots. You should be dotting the whole time that I am dotting as well, doing pointillism. So to continue our story, George Surat was born uh, not in the poor class, but more in the middle to almost high class. His parents were pretty wealthy. Um, they did work, but they didn't really have to work. And of course, the mother didn't work. I'm sorry. Women at that time weren't really encouraged to do that kind of thing. Instead, the mother had high society parties that George was often uh, made to go to. So George could have been anything he wanted to be. In the upper class, you really don't have limitations. He could have been a mayor or a lawyer or a, ph a philanthropist, somebody who just donates their money and does good things for others. Um, but he had a natural inclination toward art. So he went to an art college, and it was there that he started to develop this idea of pointillism, where dots of color would magically mix. Not magically, that's not right. Scientifically match, um, mix. Those dots would mix to form a third color. And he painted and painted and painted, but I mention his money because he did not have to be successful. It didn't matter if he sold his paintings or not, he was still going to have a house to live in. In fact, he lived in his parents' mansion. Um, he still had clothes. He still had all the food. So while Van Gogh was starving um, and had to come up with ways to make more paint, Surratt painted however he wanted to paint with no fear of success or lack of success. So at this point, I have enough dots. I'm going to cap the red and go on to the blue. Now, it turns out that people did like Surratt's work. They liked it because it was soft. The colors were beautiful. It wasn't too inventive as far as the colors not looking realistic. Um, and they were realistic images. They were images of boats or of water, of people or lakes, things that people found peaceful. So people tended to like Surratt's work. And uh, he was successful, but he didn't paint a lot. As you can tell, this is taking a bit of time, way more time than if we just took a colored pencil and we shaded a purple pencil on here. This is taking a lot of work. Um, so he didn't really paint a ton of things during his lifetime or a lot of things, um, but they were painted beautifully in the style of pointillism. At this point, you are welcome to pause your video Check your work and rejoin us. Now we're going to move on to the green. George Surratt, I mentioned, did not use markers. Markers weren't a thing yet. He used paint, but instead of using the hairy side of the brush, like we've done for Van Gogh and O'Keefe, he used the back end, the wood part. He'd dip it into the paint and just smack it onto the canvas. All right, for the green, we're going to be mixing the yellow and the blue together. We're always starting with our lightest tone, so we're going to go with our yellow. So George Surratt was painting, painting, painting until he was in his mid-20s. And at that point, his mother said, Now, George, to carry on our family wealth and our family position in society, it's time that you get married. And this is where kind of the fun part of the story comes in. So they started to have these balls, kind of like the prince in Cinderella. They had these balls where all of the rich, eligible maidens came. And George was expected to dance with them and meet them and find the lady of his dreams. And after a bit of time, he told his mother, Now, mother, I actually did fall in love. And uh, we want to get married. And she was ecstatic. Big society wedding. Okay, who is it? Is it the president's daughter? Is it the mayor's daughter? Maybe the banker's daughter? And he said, no, actually. You do know her, though. It's our maid. 
What? The maid? I don't think so. That's totally not in our social class, son. You shouldn't even be talking to the maid. She is poor. You're not going to marry the maid. Don't be ridiculous. And he's like, no, no, but it's true love. And she had a fit. She's like, son, you think that your work is so great? What if we cut you off? What if you have no money? What if we don't claim you as our son anymore? You are expected to maintain our position in society. You are expected to marry a rich woman. And he's like, calm down, mother. How about this? How about I move out and I concentrate more on my painting and I will keep coming to your balls and I will try very hard to fall in love with a woman of your choosing. And she's like, okay, we'll do this. Well, he did move out and he did continue to go to these dances. And every night he would have the same line. He'd say, thank you. It was a lovely party. I did not find the woman of my dreams. Maybe next time. And he'd go home. As we finish the green, I'd like for you again to pause the video. Hold it away from your body to see if you were truly able to make a secondary color by mixing two primaries using pointillism. So we were able to mix the three primary colors to get new colors. His idea of pointillism worked. And from a distance, his dots blend together to make more interesting colors. Now that's only one part of our lesson. Here's the second part. We are going to be making a circle with value change. We know from our past lessons, values have to do with how dark or light something is. And so I'd like you to choose a color that you have in front of you, but perhaps not yellow. Okay, so the green or the blue or the red, your choice. And what we're going to do as I continue the story is we're going to begin filling the circle with dots, but we're going to do an uneven amount. In the circles before, we did an even amount of dots all around. This time, I'd like for you to please put a lot of dots, an overwhelming amount of dots on the border all the way around. And then as you get into the center, we will lessen the amount of dots. We will put fewer and fewer dots until in the middle of the circle, we have hardly any dots. And we'll see what that does to the value. So to continue our story, George Surratt was in uh, pursuit of this wife that his parents would approve of, some wealthy young lady who would become his bride. And every night he would say, sorry, I did not find her. And he'd go home to his secret wife. He, in fact, did live with the maid. When he moved out, he invited her to move in with him. Now, records show that they weren't actually married, but they had what's called a common law marriage, meaning that if you live together long enough, the rest of the world will say, hey, they're married. We have that in America as well. If you live with somebody long enough, it's very difficult to get apart from each other because you are legally married by common law marriage. So anyway, he and his wife lived together and they were extremely happy. He painted, he did the things that he loved. He spent time with his bride, his wife that he loved so much. They eventually had a cute little boy, a little son who was just a toddler. Sad that his grandparents couldn't know about him, but of course, they still expected George to marry some rich heiress. So it went on like that for a couple years. And as we go around these dots here, as we complete the circle of dots, I'd like you to think about what is happening to the value. What is happening to make certain areas appear darker and certain areas appear lighter? Be prepared to say it. Right now. As you finish up, the sentence is over here. Uh, 
observation. I notice that when the dots are closer together, the value is something, and when the dots are spread further apart, it creates a something value. What would you say? I notice that when the dots are closer together, the value is, I assume that's what you're noticing, the value is darker, but then when you spread the dots further apart, it creates a lighter value.